session, uh, which is a 30 minute discussion with Nancy Fulbury, Young Ok Kim, Karen Grone, and Amel Memish. Um, and per Nancy's suggestion, I think Young Ok will go first, but I'll turn the mic over to Nancy. Thanks. I uh, just want to say a really great session, really good idea. I think I already did unmute myself. Yeah. So, um, so now a little bit more freeform discussion of, of um, kind of uh, research needs and um, a lot to say in a small amount of time. So I'm going to ask Young Ak uh, to go first. Okay, thank you. Uh... I would like to say the first the what are the critical research and evidence gap in care world and the economy, uh, and this, in fact, the uh, care work and economy project, uh, as we know, uh, has tried to develop macro models in order to explain care economy, and over the three years. And during this journey, we witnessed significant achievements. But I might say uh, it is not enough. Efforts should be extended to modify existing macroeconomic models. Besides CGE model, we uh, tried to develop the CGE model, but we haven't done uh, the touch the overlapping generations and Keynesian and post Keynesian models and more. And another research gap is found in the area of recovery of Corona uh, pandemic. Uh, COVID-19 is prevalent over a year and it is not possible nor desirable for a society to go back to the right where it was before. Uh, simply recovering pre-pandemic indexes uh, uh, such as GDP and employment rate cannot be an ultimate goal. Uh, then uh, what can, what should be our goal? Uh, I might say maybe the goal uh, should be uh, so-called decent care economy or uh, full care economy. Uh, and how much money should be allocated to safe uh, care measures within um, the uh, COVID-19 recovery packages? And how much money needed to address the care crisis while building back the recovery, the, building back the economy? Uh, another concern is the coronavirus makes uh, care deficits more worse and exacerbate inequality. As an example, there is a report about COVID-19 and the gender gap in working hours. School and daycare closures uh, increase the caregiving responsibilities for working parents, especially working mothers. Mothers with children have reduced their work hours four or five times more than fathers. Another uh, Korean recent work showed married women, married women with children uh, after the corona break, uh, they were unemployed or moved out of the labor market uh, far more than fathers. And therefore, uh, cutting edge uh, researchers, uh, uh, researches are needed to uh, analyze how Corona exacerbated the care provision gaps and inequality. And another issue is uh, what are the challenges in conducting this research? Uh, I don't know much about the methodological challenges, so I just mentioned about the data limitations. Uh, Korean time use survey is implemented every five years and the more recent data uh, and the most recent data is the survey of 19, 2019. And the next survey will be done in 2024. 
It means Times Survey cannot catch any challenges, changes due to Corona pandemic. I will suggest uh, to Statistics Korea uh, to shorten the survey cycle or to do intermediate uh, surveys with an uh, abbreviated format. And uh, lastly, I'd like to say about um, how can we influence more researchers, uh, in particular economists, uh, in particular economists, to pay attention to and investigate the care world and the care economy. I think that, it, that it, uh, this uh, question is very desperate and important. I think we can learn from the experience of this uh, care work and in the economy project. Uh, this project uh, articulated the research areas uh, like uh, rethinking, rethinking macroeconomics and uh, gender aware applied modeling, etc., and support related researches. And in result, uh, today we can see enjoy the 18 working papers and 10 uh, policy brief in the website. As a coordinator of working group three, when I organized the expert meeting in order to review uh, construction of Korean uh, social accounting metrics and uh, estimation of a CG model for Korea, I had a hard time to locate and invite relevant economists. Uh, and I could not find anyone, particularly among young scholars. Most of the studies in Korea about care and social care uh, expenditure and care ethics and care policies have, done, have been done by the experts majored in sociology or social welfare. Uh, with this experience, I became to believe money matters. And I proposed to form a so-called research fund for care economy in order to tap uh, talents of young economists into this research area, such as developing the new cutting edge uh, macro models or care policy researches or care infrastructure researches. Okay, that's it, thank you. Thank you so much. That last idea is particularly really sounds great. Um, Emil, would you like to go next? Uh, yes, uh, adding on uh, Jan Bob's points, actually, I'll just mention some of the data challenges we've been facing in our own research and then uh, extend to the general issues about news data. Uh, one of the most important challenge we faced was about the information on income and consumption patterns of the households. So it was difficult to bring the time news patterns uh, together with the monetary uh, well-being or uh, welfare of the households. Uh, so uh, that, that, that's one point. Still, some of the data uh, is not rich about that, except the Korean one we worked on. And um, I think one of the challenges that we need to uh, think about is the more detailed information about paid work time, because given the pandemic situation, uh, our, uh, the distinction between the workplace and the home has been disappeared. So uh, we don't know much about uh, paid work activities, except for the length of it in terms of time. You know, measuring with time is, is sort of limited. And uh, I was thinking about the intersectional inequalities. Given the Turkish situation, like the regional inequalities and ethnic-based inequalities, uh, in addition to gender, because there has not been much uh, research about that, except for a small sample uh, surveys. So it will be important to raise that issue as well. Um, and give, uh, given other hierarchies in time use data. And uh, in addition to that, diary method is extremely important. And uh, all household members information is extremely impor important for economists especially, there has been a, a richer, much richer uh, literature uh, among the sociologists, but economists somehow, you know, forget that uh, the field of economics is a, 
actually started from the uh, analysis of households. So uh, it's very important to convince them, uh, to remind them the, the, this uh, without analyzing, uh, without those uh, information, uh, you cannot understand the whole economic sphere, et cetera. And they, I think with, with during the pandemic, there has been a lot of attention. Probably they spend more time at home and they realize how important uh, also themselves, you know, uh, all the activities that's going on at home. And, uh, and we should link with the monetary sphere uh, much uh, concretely. I think it's time to think about using time use data in new strategies uh, for our new life, normal for new normal, perhaps post growth society. And uh, the way from, I mean, the term care economy is somehow Eurocentric way of saying uh, the importance of the, the relation between economic life and care work. So uh, we, we, need, we need to strategize towards caring economy to caring society caring not just for children and elderly, but all, all everybody around us, etc. So time use data could be very helpful on that sense with all the richer um, information, detailed information. And for countries like us, I think it's very important to use different classifications of activities, uh, which are very different than Eurostat classification, could be very different. A uh, final point, I think uh, we need to think about uh, more, inf I don't know how to do it time with the time use diaries, but it could give a lot of information about child labor, how uh, unpaid work activities, which are unseen, not just for, for adult women, they are unseen for girls, especially, which is uh, preventing their access to education and hence, whole life inequalities come after that. So I think I'll leave there. Uh, whenever something comes up, uh, I'd like to jump in. Uh, thanks. I, I do think there's a really good agenda for us to try to provide a more critical analysis and improvement of time use survey instruments. Mm -hmm. So I think we should kind of put that on our list of things to fix. <laughs> Karen. Uh, your turn. Uh, it's so great to be back and see everybody. And I'm really sorry I missed yesterday's uh, conversation. I don't get enough opportunities to have uh, to participate in these kinds of meetings. So thank you. I really enjoyed the discussion of the papers. So let me pick up on the last uh, point that Nancy made. I, I actually have been thinking about this in the context of COVID, where uh, we've had to really pivot in terms of survey methods to using remote technologies. Um, uh, phone-based, uh, telephone sampling, phone-based surveys. And I started to think about whether, uh, I, I don't know what a new normal might look like, and maybe we'll go back in person with um, the kind of paper, you know, diaries and so forth. But as we think about technology and new technologies, how can we improve upon the time use data using the new technological tools? And what does it mean? Can we do something in the context, for instance, of a, a household survey that uses telephone technology or other things or using, you know, the, you know, just building on some of the CAPI and other stuff. So that is something that I would be interested in hearing about. Um, a few more things on the research that, you know, I think it's really important. Um, so in the world that I'm currently part of, um, I really think that uh, much more research needs to be done to um, really make the case for care as part of economic infrastructure. We just somehow, and I think that is um, really important. And uh, it may be made, that case may be made in the OECD countries, but I think there's harder thinking to be done about how to make that case in low resource, low income environments. And I think we have to think about those settings in differentiated ways, you know, in terms of economic structure, primarily agrarian economies that may be transitioning at some point or um, in, you know, emerging market economies that are already pretty much semi-industrialized where those issues are really clear. And the issue that I think is particularly important is um, uh, that you know, it's hard to make an investment case, particularly in those settings when countries don't even have enough money for education and health sector financing. And it goes into the macroeconomics of this, as we all 
know in terms of debt finance and, and deficit, deficit, all kinds of other things. But I think we need to really develop some modeling that's specific to those kinds of environments. This relates to another issue that I, I came out a little bit today. And I think economists need to get more involved in the conversation about social norms. So the issue of take up of care uh, and uh, what needs to be done to encourage uh, when childcare is available in quote unquote normal times to take that up. I mean, maybe after COVID there will be greater take up because everybody realizes the deficits that were exposed. How do we think about changing male norms explicitly? How do we think about um, the issues of male norms as employees in the sector? Balancing that with you know, concerns about trust and safety for children. I, I just think there's a social norm agenda that we could be a good part of that conversation. Finally, I think we need a lot more on the policy simulations. And I, in terms of different kinds of care policies, more granular, what does it mean in, ter in terms of insurance, you know, insurance regulations? What does it mean in terms of uh, labor market reforms? So those granular policy simulations, and again, in different types of economic settings would be uh, very valuable. Um, the last thing I would say, again, from on the research side from where I sit is, um, focusing on the elderly, because that's been such an important part of this project, that where I sit, there's, there's um, care is not part of that convert. The people who focus on elderly and health, for instance, don't focus on the care dimension. And I really think we could do a lot more to think about some of the health dimensions, like the uh, taking on from the health economists different types of non-communicable diseases and different uh, risk profiles of elderly who have these different uh, mm -hmm. risks of health and what that means for different types of care provisions. Um, we haven't built into our models some of the population issues that I think are really important, like widowhood. Women live longer than men in many countries. What are um, and so I, that might be an emerging research agenda. And the final thing I want to say is about dissemination. I think the work in this project is really fabulous, but I think it needs, we need to have a better strategy for how to get it out to the communities that we wouldn't normally reach to help make the kind of case, uh, you know? So, um, you know, I definitely want to share all of the papers and policy briefs across the bank communities and so forth. That's not going to be enough though. I have to be, you know, partly because uh, the bank needs to kind of, Beth will know this very well, do it themselves in some way. So we need to give them some help in how they might do it themselves to come to the conclusions that we already know uh, work. But I, I really think it's useful to think a little bit further about dissemination approaches and not just a release of a paper in a journal or having a policy brief, but how do we really take on having meaningful conversations and using perhaps different methods of blogs or social media here as well. So let me stop there. Great. Um, I think we've already built a pretty good list, pretty good to-do list here. Um, I wanna give time to participants to chime in. Just go ahead and speak. I think that'll work. Or you can raise your hand. While you're thinking, I'll just say that you and women has actually been doing some really interesting research on public policies towards COVID and just in response to, to uh, young ox uh, points and also work on redesigning um, time use surveys using a light diary approach, which is more compatible with uh, digital media. So I think there are some really good links with what, what is going on uh, with this UN Women and UN Statistical Division that we should be mindful of. Nancy, can I just mention uh, in that regard, there's actually a joint effort with UN Women and the World Bank and the ILO to move towards harmonizing on light time use approaches. And there's some really interesting work that has already emerged 
um, in countries like Malawi with experimentation in that regard. And I'll try to find links to share with people. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, I think a lot, is, a lot of, of, of things are happening in that arena, which is really good. Two participants raised their hands, so do I need to? I think both uh, Beth and I have raised hands. Uh, okay, Ito, you go first. <laughs> Actually, Beth raised first, but okay. Uh, <laughs> I think I think these are great ideas. Um, a lot of them, uh, I really think we should uh, really follow up on. Uh, so it, it, I think ML talked about the sort of need for more intersectional intersectional approach to research. And I think that's really, really important. Um, and, and in fact, I think already some of the statistic, uh, data uh, agencies like Statistics Canada just recently received a huge uh, grant uh, from the, the, the government uh, to rethink their data collection mechanisms. And we are working with them to, re uh, to on the on the specifics of the data corrections. And, and one of the things that we're pushing for is to have more gender, race, and citizenship status, disaggregated data uh, in their uh, census and time use and all household uh, surveys. So I think uh, that's something that we should you know, uh, really do. Another thing is that as a sociologist, I, I was like feeling really amazed uh, and, 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 and re, you know, uh, happy to hear economists saying that, that, that economists should you know, work more with sociologists because we're always more envious of economists' ability to do all this great stuff. Uh, so I think what it says, uh, what it suggests is that we should do have, in terms of the research, uh, we should have more sort of integrated collaborative uh, research uh, uh, between sociology and economics and other disciplines as well, uh, a much more interdisciplinary sort of research agenda. So thank you. Yes. So Nancy, two points. <clears throat> One is, I think uh, a little bit more focus probably on immigrants and the role of immigrants in uh, care work is, is something that I think needs to be taken up. Uh, it's not just in the US, it's a lot of places in Europe, but also in, in Korea. And not being able to identify immigrant status is a real problem, I think. I mean, it's, it's because we, you know, not being able to, to, I mean, one way to do it, I guess, is to ask the question, where were you born or something? But I'm not sure, you know, there are many sensitive questions about immigration state status. So we need to think about how to do this work and, and, and kind of negotiate those um, sensitivities about questions about immigration. Second point, Nancy, is that you've, you've led a center that focuses on care. I'd really like to, um, to, to, to hear about your experience about sort of, you know, uh, have you seen traction with respect to, you know, your interest in care and where is it coming from and how can, because the young ops uh, idea about a, a research fund on care and, and, and having a, a, you know, more sort of uh, an institute of, of, of some sort on that, mm -hmm. uh, I think would benefit from your experience, lessons from your experience for, for having a, a care center. Well, um, all good points. I'll just say really quickly, I, I do think um, care is getting a lot of traction as a, as a research topic and the Ford Foundation and other, other, you know, seven other major foundations have announced a major initiative around care issues in the, in the US. However, a lot of its focus, a lot of it's sort of very applied and it's harder to get support for kind of research-based initiatives on care. And um, I, I just have been working on a proposal uh, to improve kind of the, the care database in ways uh, that are very consistent with what everybody has said and uh, haven't had much success in, in pitching it. Uh, but I, I think if we keep after it, uh, that there is a lot of potential. Uh, I think that the experience of COVID um, 
as everybody has pointed out, has kind of energized the, the discourse. So we should do whatever we can to take advantage of the current moment. I don't know, do other people have suggestions or ideas about this? I think the, uh, I mean, I, I was really glad to see uh, Gretchen's kind of uh, presentation that connects us with the national transfer accounts. And I think that is an example of a very data intensive uh, project that uh, we should all be paying more attention to, but also one where I think we have some kind of th interesting th theoretical differences and, and disagreements that uh, would be good for us to process. Um, and I also think this discussion between, you know, CGE models and, and more uh, post-Keynesian overlapping generation models, I think this is a very fruitful kind of uh, exchange that's really important to thinking about the care economy. So uh, if we could get our, you know, if we could create more of a forum for really theorizing um, s some of those uh, kind of big, big theoretical issues, I think that would really be a great direction to go. I think Maria Floro has her hand up. Oh, Sergi, I think you should have the last word. No, um, in fact, are, first of all, I want to acknowledge, thank, thank you for a very interesting and really wonderful uh, panel. But I also want to acknowledge that there are several people in this group that have been working on research cent on centers and research institutions, institutions that have addressed care issues. So um, I hope that at some point you'll be able to share your own reflection. Uh, but that said, I, I was also thinking that Currently, at least in the United States, as well as in Canada and in other places, there are now new initiatives to address care issues, right? The one thing I think that this um, project can also contribute, or at least the methodologies and the, and the insights from our research can contribute, would be on improving the impact evaluation of those initiatives. Much of the initiatives, for example, let's say on universal care provision, child care provision in Quebec, tend to focus on, well, what has happened to children in terms of their development, which is very important. Or maybe they could add, oh, let's look at what happened to women's la mother's labor supply, right? Mm -hmm. But what this project has shown is that there are several people who, uh, whose well-being are affected by that kind of initiative. You have the care workers, well-being, you have also the parents' well-being, you have the children both in the short run and the long run, but also the broader community and the economy. Those are tend to be missed out in such project evalu evaluations. It's also a way by which, for example, the issue of care be addressed not just by our group or people who are already convinced of care, but people who've been doing a lot of project evaluations, they tend to have this very narrow money metric or growth related kind of, yeah. of thing. And I think that's one area that we can contribute in terms of methodology, information that they need to do in order to evaluate the effectiveness or trade-offs or tensions that emerge in such initiatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said, yeah. Beth, did you wanna? Chime in. Just to say that there are, as, as Sergio was saying, there's, uh, there's actually quite a lot of impact evaluation related to, for example, early childhood development, and uh, which, and and also, of course, on on, on education and and health. I think the uh, the point I think that Sergio is making, if I might elaborate on that, is that these evaluations talk about the impact on the child. So early childhood education is about the child and the impact on the child. Mm -hmm. If we are going to take a look at a care aware impact evaluation, then the cost or the toll to the carers of getting a certain, uh, a certain level of early childhood development is something that we need to understand better. Yeah. And, and, and actually, there is a movement, uh, Nancy, to, to measure costs of, of program evaluations more. 
uh, J-PAL, for example, but not only J-PAL, 3IE are focusing more on, on, on costing this, uh, these programs. The, what they neglect to measure is the non-monetary non cost. Mm -hmm. they, they, they neglect the time cost of actually uh, achieving the kinds of impact that, that we want. And they also don't include the political cost. There's always a political cost to yeah. various interventions. All right, uh, well, our time is up. I think we have a lot of momentum. We just have to keep going. <laughs>